Hello everyone, my name is Andrew and today we're going to continue working with Fest API. Today we're going to talk about data that we can send from the front end to the back end and we are also going to work with dynamic URLs. You can find all the code in the description and uh, in the last video we just talked about what is Fest API, why do we need it and how to use it. So watch the last video if you have no idea on what that framework is, why do we use it and so on. Right now what we have is we import our Fest API object, we create our app and that's it. You should know that we can create our app like this, we can run it with this and what we want to do right now is send some data. Whenever we want to work with a backend, whenever we want to work with a web app, we probably need to send some data from the user. So let's say that we have a route, so app.post for now, don't worry about that that allows us to create a user. So create user. Whenever you create a user, you want to send some information about that user. So his email, um, password, uh, username, or something like that. And uh, how do we send the data in Fest API? So if I just do, let's do app get for now, and let's run it like this. If I just run my application, then go to Chrome, so Chrome here, and then slash docs. So if I go to docs, I can see that we have a create user but there is no data in there. So there is no parameters, no data that I can write. So I cannot say, okay, I want to create a user with this username, this uh, this email and this password. And in order to add some information into your first API applications, what you should do is just add that info as a parameter inside of your function. So if I can say data and then restart my application, so let's restart it, go back to the documentation. So slash docs, update it, then you're gonna see a thing called data. So right now what we can do is add some information, any kind of information. So if I press try it out, I can write whatever I want here. It's gonna be in this argument. So if I, let's do print, print data, and let's uh, restart our project once again. You can wait for it to restart on its own, but I like to do this. And uh, if I print my data here, I press execute, you're gonna see that the data that I send, so let's say uh, Andrew, I'm gonna say that Andrew is printed here. So it's very easy in Fest API to get your data from the front end. So let's say that you want to create a user, that is your user data. So you can do whatever you want here. You can add any kind of data, you can use it in if statements or wherever you want. But the problem with the data is that it's not structured. So right now I can send anything. Let's say that I want to send um, my user, right? I want to send password, email, and username. Right now there is no structure in my data. So what I can do is say, okay, username is Andrew, then email is mail at mail.com. But uh, let's say that I forget about the password. If I press execute, my function is still going to work. But there are two problems. First of all, no structure, no password, for example. And second of all, we need to parse that username, email, and all that stuff. So we need parsing and we need structure. And uh, it can be very hard to work with structure in other frameworks, but, but in Fast API, what you need is to create a model. So right now we can accept any kind of data. If you want structure, and most of the times you have to use some kind of structure, like think about anything, right? You order a product, you have a structure. What kind of product product are you ordering? What's the quantity that you're ordering? What's the address that you want that product to be sent to? And all that stuff. So that is structure. And in order to create structure in Fest API, what we need to do is use a thing called Pydantic. Pydantic is a very, very, very popular library for that uh, kind of task. So it allows you to create a model. Let me show you what a model is. So class user that inherits from base model. And that user allows you to add or that model. It can be product, it can be an order, whatever you want, but for us it's user. That user allows you to add any kind of structure inside of your application. So right now, in order to create an entity, like a model that has, um, let's say email, so email, string, username, string, and password, string, I just have to do this. So those are annotations in Python and I have a separate video on how to use annotations. And what we're saying here is that we have a Pydantic model and Pydantic just allows us to do a lot of stuff like parsing, validation and all that. And we're saying that we have a user model and we want that model to have email, username and password. If one of those fields is missing, then we're going to see an error. And in order to apply that model inside of our route, so inside of here, what I have to do is just do an annotation to user. So like this. So annotations are widely used in Python nowadays and Fest API is one of the reasons why they are used like that because uh, it's very easy to use them. Let's say that uh, I want my balance to be a float, right? Balance float. If I want to say, okay, this variable is a float, I can just use an annotation. Pydantic, so this library, base model are gonna check that this balance exists on my user, exists in my data. It's a float, it has some other characteristics and so on. So it's really easy to use and really, really, really help when validating your data. Okay, let's restart our application and refresh our documentation. Now, what we can see here is that we have an example schema. So what we need to do is send email, username and password. So the things that we wrote here in our user. If I go back, I can see that uh, 
if I press try it out, I'm gonna see that schema in here. So here's the schema. And let's change it. So let's say that email is gonna be, or email is gonna be mail at mail.com. Username is gonna be Andrew, and password is gonna be one to three. Let's press execute. So this big blue button. And if I go back to PyCharm, and um, okay, wait, something's wrong. Maybe I didn't press execute. Yeah, okay, request. Yeah, let's talk about that first. So <laughs> it's not the problem with Pydantic. Everything that we wrote here is fine, except for one thing. At the start of the video, I wrote post here. We haven't used post requests yet, but um, whenever you use Pydantic, whenever you use HTTP, there are different types of requests. So what you have is get, and we used get in the previous video to get our counter updated and so on. And what you also have is a post. So for now, think of post as adding, creating your data inside your application. So if you want to add any kind of data, let's say create a user, place an order, or um, do something like that. So create user, place order, create something in your application. You're using post. So app.post, everything else is the same. So you have your URL here, but uh, get is used for getting the data. So just querying the data. Post is used for actually changing something. So creating some new entity inside of your application. And the problem that we have here is that um, failed to execute fetch, it's a JS error, but it says that get request, so get or head request cannot have a body. And right now we're having a body with our data user. So the problem is that get requests do not have a body. That's just like a rule in HTTP. And if I refresh it, change it to post. By the way, look here, it's get now, I refresh it, it's post. Right now, what I can do is actually use that um, data, use that information. So let's quickly change it to mail at mail.com, something like that, then Andrew, and then one, two, three. Let's press execute. And now if I go back to my application, I can see that all the information is here. So email, username, and passwords are here. So all the fields are here. If let's say I forget about one field, so I forget about password. I press execute, see what's gonna happen. My re response is the error. So it says unprocessable entity, field error, value error missing, what is missing, password inside of my body. Right now, what you can do is use Pydantic to add those validations. Yeah, that's basically it. That's why Pydantic is created and that's how FastAPI uses. Of course, you can also do a lot of cool stuff like access fields like this. So dot username, you don't need to parse anything yourself. You can put your fields in JSON, in dictionaries and so on. I'll probably create a separate video on Pydantic, but for now, what we want to do is just add that user to a list. So let's actually create a user. So I'm gonna have a list of users. Users is a list. And let's say users.append our data. So we append our data and then let's return a new object that says um, created true. That just indicates that our user was created. If I restart my application, go back here, refresh, and then go to create user, let's try it out. We're not gonna change anything here. Let's just see here, response created. So I press execute and our user is created. That's it. That's what I wanted to show you. Also, let's create a separate thing that allows us to get all of our users. And um, the thing about post and get requests, so different HTTP requests, because there are put, delete requests, uh, is that you can use the same URL with different methods. So that is an HTTP method. If you use put and post, or let's say uh, get and post on the same URL, it's gonna be fine. Because if you use get, you're using get users function. If you're using post in HTTP, you're using create user. So you can use the same URL with different methods. And that is really, really good sometimes. Okay, what I wanna do is create a new get request that just returns all of my users. Let's restart our application, go back to the documentation, and here I can see my get users. For now, let's create just one sample user, and let's go to get users, try it out, execute, and you can see that this user is here. So right now, what we can do is add our user, query all of the users, and uh, well, that's pretty cool. If I add another user, let's, let me just show it to you quickly, I add another user, let me change the username, I press execute, I press execute on get again, and we can see that we have two users now. So the username here and here is different, meaning that those are actually the users that we created. Basically that. So as you can see, FastAPI is very, very, very simple. The last thing that I wanna show you is dynamic URLs. So what is a dynamic URL? Let's say that we want to get a user using some kind of ID. So in our case, what we can do is use our Python list to get a user that uh, has a specific index. So let's say that we want the user with index zero or with index one. In order to do that, we need to use get request. So get request, get the user, right? Get user, user by ID, something like that. There is one problem, however, is that uh, we cannot get a user using specific ID if we don't have that specific ID. So we somehow need to add that ID inside of, uh, well, somewhere here. So we need to add that dynamic data. Here when we use post request, we add data using Pydantic models. But if you want, to add uh, a dynamic URL. And what is dynamic URL? Dynamic URL is basically a URL where one part can be changed. So in our case, what it's gonna be is ID here. So I'm saying we have a get URL, 
but it also has an ID. ID is a value. If that ID changes, uh, you can still use uh, the same function. So you can still use the same route, this route, but uh, we also add an ID here. And basically what we do is we can say, okay, go to slash one. ID here is gonna be equal to one. So this argument is gonna be one. If I go to slash two, ID is gonna be equal to two. So you don't have to create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can just use ID and um, it's gonna dynamically go to this specific uh, route if your ID is, um, even if your ID changes. So it's not like a route with uh, slash ID. So this ID variable is dynamic. We can change it to whatever we want. We can change it to hello, goodbye, and so on. And right now what we want to do is get that ID as an index. So that is our index of the user in that user's list. And I'm also saying that ID is gonna be here and it's gonna be an integer. So we also add validation. It may be very hard for you to get what I'm saying, but uh, if I just return users from ID, you're gonna see what I mean. Let's restart our application and uh, refresh our documentation. If I create two users, so let's create user one and user two with changed data. So mail.mail.com, Andrew and password one to three. Let's press execute. So we have two users right now. If I go to get users, I try it out. I can see that we have two users here. So the first one is just string, string, string. Second one is Andrew. What I want to do is get user using his or hers ID. And in order to do that, we need to use this route. As you can see here, I have my ID, but it's also a parameter. So what we can do is go to try it out and put zero as our index. If I press execute, we're gonna receive our user. So our first user, if I press, or if I change it to one, we're gonna receive our other user. So basically what happens is ID is dynamic. This thing in curly braces is dynamic. If I change it to whatever I want, but of course it should be an integer, that's just the rule. It's um, easier to add validation like this. Of course you can just leave it as it is, but always add validation. As we've seen with the user, it's just easier to add annotation and make sure that the value provided here is an integer. But basically what you want to do is um, if you have something, some part of your URL that changes, you can add it in curly braces and add it as a parameter. And um, it's gonna show up like this. So you're doing HTTP one, you can even copy that request URL, go here. We're gonna see our first user. If I change it to zero, I'm gonna see our, not the first user, but user on the index zero in our list. And that's basically how it works. So you have that dynamic URL. I think that's it for now. So that is about dynamic URLs and how to pass structured data in Fast API. Hope you liked that video and um, subscribe to my channel. Go to my PySimulator library. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.